Khawarez High School, the director of Marrakesh, the regional academy of Marrakesh, Safi. Good morning, all second year baccalaureate students across Morocco. Dear viewers and followers, welcome to this new video lesson from the second year English program series. Today we're going to shed some light on this new structure which is about wishes. We're going to talk about wishes in the present, wishes in the past, and we may also talk about wishes in the future. For the newcomers and the new followers who would like to follow my previous videos and my most updated videos, do not hesitate to subscribe to my YouTube channel, which is, which is displayed on the screen here, English for All, Buhalm, as you can see. If you do not opt for YouTube or if you don't have a chance to follow me on YouTube, you can also log into my Facebook page, which is entitled English for All as well. So, in order to get a good and a better understanding of wishes, I opted for comparing these two, I mean, very close, in terms of meaning, very close words. We have wish and hope. We should actually make a clear-cut uh, difference or distinction between the two, so that we can get a better understanding of wishes. So, what do we mean by wish? A wish is a desire for something to happen desire for something to happen. In order to understand the meaning very well, we can actually look at the following examples. And as you can see, we have this word here, or this marker, we have S1, which refers to situation number one, and S2, which is, or which refers to situation number two. So let's read them. We have people can't go out. The wish is people wish they could go out. I can't fly. I wish I could fly. So, if I may ask you, what is the relationship between the situations that we have here, or the sentence that we have in situation number one, and the sentence that we have in situation number two? And there is normally a reason why we have this forward slash here in the middle. It's simply to say that the relationship is the opposite, the relationship between the two, is that the situations that we have in number two, or situation number two, is the opposite of situation number one. Situation number one is what we have. I mean, situations that we have in our real life. And situations that we have in number two are the ones that we actually wish to happen. So we have the desire for them to happen. So we can simply say that we have the present situation, or if you want, the real-life situation, we can simply say, in order not to confuse present with past wishes and future wishes, we can say the current situation, that's the real-life situation, and we have the wish that we have, what we want to actually have. So as you can see, we always wish for the opposite of the current situation or the real life situation. How do we actually express this opposite? Simply by the verb. We have can't, can't. And can't here is in the negative form. We just make it in the what? In the positive form. But there is one other, we, one other if you want, uh, transformation that we have to pay attention in terms of tenses. We have to change the tense of the verb. I will talk about this later on. Let's have a look at hope. Hope is having a desire and anticipation for something to happen. Some students may say that we have the same definition. I will ask you to focus on anticipation. So when we anticipate something, it simply means that we anticipate something to happen in the future. It means that we cannot and it's impossible to hope for something, for example, in the past. So, we have desire and anticipation. Anticipation here refers to the future. That's the difference between wish and hope. We can have a present, past and future wish, but hope, we only hope for something to happen in the future. We can simply say here, I hope the authorities will end the lockdown. It's the same thing here. People can't go out. People wish they could go out. People wish they could go out. It's the same thing. I hope the authorities will end the lockdown. But the grammatical structure is, is completely different. 
Let's have a look at the second example. I hope I will travel in the summer. I hope I will travel in the summer. If you want, we can also add in the summer holiday. So this is something that I want to happen in the, in the future. So that's the difference between wish and hope. Now we will move to uh, talking about wishes. And we will see the different structures and the different forms of wishes in the present, past and future. Now, as you can see, we will move to the future wish or wishes in the future or about the future. So, as we have already followed with the present and the past, we're going to continue with the same if you want real life situations. As you can see, we have real life situations and here we have future wishes. Let's start with the first one. You know the rule. We have two possibilities. We can either start with I wish or E following. So we have different, if you want, situations here. We have Morocco isn't a rich country. Morocco, our country, isn't a rich country. I wish Morocco, we have the verb isn't, is negative, we make it positive, but we use an auxiliary which we use an auxiliary which refers to the future. I wish Morocco would, the verb that we have here is is, so we use would plus be in the bare infinitive or in the infinitive. I wish Morocco would be a rich country. Or if only Morocco would be would be what? Would be a rich country. Number two, people can travel in the summer. It's impossible because of the lockdown, of course. So let's have a look at number one. People wish they, we have they can, it's negative, so we would make it positive. People wish they could travel. They could travel in the next summer holiday. Okay, so people wish they could travel in the next summer holiday or in the summer. People wish they could travel. Or if only people could travel in the next summer holiday. The pandemic spreads everywhere. The pandemic here means the disease, okay, or the epidemic. So the pandemic spreads everywhere. I wish the pandemic wouldn't spread. Here we have it spreads everywhere. Because the verb is positive, we use everywhere. But because we have the negative form, we are not going to use everywhere anymore, but we're going to change it. I wish the pandemic wouldn't spread anywhere. Not everywhere, but anywhere because of this, uh, let's, let's say, form of the verb, the negative form. If only the pandemic wouldn't Spread anywhere. The world economy won't recover soon. Recover means get better or heal. Okay? I wish the world economy would. So we have negative becomes positive. Would recover would recover soon. Or if only the world economy would recover soon. I can't follow my online classes. 
I wish I could. Plus infinitive verb. I wish I could follow my online classes. Or if only I could follow my online classes. I wish I could follow. So as you can see here, we can use either would or could to refer to what to future wishes. So now we're going to actually write the structure. What is the structure of the future wish? We always have, if you want, the first possibility or the first category transformation here. We have subject, of course, the first one, plus wish, plus subject to the second subject, plus would or could, plus the infinitive verb. And of course, infinitive without to, what we call the bare infinitive verb. Bare infinitive verb form. Okay? Or, if you want the second form or possibility, if only plus subject plus would or could plus the bare infinitive verb. So here is how do we actually make the future wish and the main transformations in terms of tenses. Take a look at this lesson here. So let's have a recap of all what we have talked about in today's lesson. So we're going to say, let's say the different types of, of wishes the present wish, the past wish, and the future wish, and we're going to talk about the grammatical structure or the rules that we have for each of them. And of course, we're going to talk about the use. Why do we need to use the present, past, and future wish? Let's have a look at the first one. We have present wish. It's normally subject plus wish plus subject. The second subject plus, well, the second subject, which is the same, okay? We have, for example, John, he, or I, I plus the past simple verb. So if we want to make the present wish, we have to actually use the past simple verb. Why do we need to use the present wish? So, the use. Uh, the present wish describes a situation that we want to be different. So you, you, you describe a situation that you want to be different from the present situation. Past wish. We have subject or the first subject plus wish plus the second subject plus the past perfect verb. Here we have the past simple for the present. Here we have the past perfect verb, the past, if only plus subject plus past perfect verb. Good. Why do we need to use the past wish? We use the past wish to express regret about something that you did or that you didn't do. Or to say that we want the situation to be different in the past. You want to have a different situation in the past, which was different from what? from that situation that you had in the past. We have the future wish. We have subject, the first subject, plus wish, plus the second subject, plus would or could, plus bare infinitive verb. Bare infinitive verb means a verb without to. Or if only plus subject, plus would or could, plus the bare infinitive verb. So why do we need to use the past or the future? Sorry, the future wish. We use the future wish to say that you want something to happen in the, in the future. So you want something to be different in the future or to happen in the future. So these are, these are the main points that I want you to actually instill and that I would like you to pay more attention to. So we have the structure and the use. And of course, we will try to work on some exercises uh, in the next video or I will try to actually give you a PowerPoint which will actually combine few exercises about wishes. Thanks so much for following me on this video. Please, if you want more, uh, I mean, videos about the second year baccalaureate program, don't hesitate to subscribe to my YouTube channel, as I always tell you, which is, I mean, displayed to you on the screen here, English 
for Album Random. Or if you don't opt for YouTube, you can also find these videos, either the previous videos or the most recent ones on my uh, Facebook page, which is also entitled English for All. Thank you so much for following me on this video and see you in another video with another lesson. Goodbye.